health promotion, health maintenance, and home health considerations. Meeting the health care needs of the aging population is a challenge in today's world. Older adults will account for at least 34% of all health care expenditures. Advances in the health care through techniques, procedures, and medications has helped prolong the life of the older adult. And due to the burden placed on Medicare through an increased number of older adults, health care may have to be rationed to the older adult. So to combat this possibility, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act was enacted. Studies have shown that prevention of issues is more cost effective than treating them. So more effort has been put forth for health promotion and health maintenance. This will require lifestyle changes and education. Older adults should consume a well-balanced diet based on the food pyramid and recommended daily allowances of nutrients. Some changes are required as we age in caloric intake and protein and vitamin needs. Older adults will need to learn to read and interpret labels, especially if they have special dietary needs such as low sodium. Another lifestyle change will be exercise because it helps keep those joints flexible. It helps maintain muscle mass. It helps control blood glucose levels and the client's weight and helps promote a sense of well-being. This exercise does not have to be aerobic exercise, but it should include around 30 minutes of continuous activity. The type and duration of exercise should vary from person to person. Now with tobacco and alcohol, this is another lifestyle change we encourage. Even the body of an older person can repair damage once smoking is discontinued. Cessation may be difficult when smoking has been a long-standing habit, but various aids are now available to help smokers quit. Alcoholism is a common problem in the older adult population in both men and women because alcohol may be used as a means of coping with depression, sleep disorders, or other problems. A healthcare provider may recommend a glass of wine or beer to an older adult, though, to help enhance their appetite. Older adults should also consider physical examinations and preventative overall care. These older adults should be examined at least once a year by their physicians and more often if there are known health problems that exist. If this is an op or this will be an opportunity for the physician to detect problems before they become more serious, to monitor and treat chronic conditions, and prevent some other health problems. The assessment should include general assessments and vaccinations, and those vaccinations will include the pneumococcal, which consists of two vaccines, the influenza annually, the tetanus diphtheria pertussis every 10 years, shingles, and hepatitis B would be an individually based uh, vaccination. Some older adults will resist those yearly physical examinations because of the cost and or the fear of what the doctor might find. Dental examinations and preventative oral care are also encouraged. Older adults are able to keep their natural teeth longer than previous generations. Gum disease and tooth decay are major causes of tooth loss. We should encourage dental examinations at least once a year and older adults should continue to brush and floss twice a day. If they have issues with their grip or ability to coordinate movement, sometimes those wider handled bristles or brushes might be necessary. Clients that wear dentures still need to have regular oral examinations to check for those oral cancers or other oral issues. It is necessary to make sure there's a proper fit with the dentures to avoid nutritional concerns. Dry mouth can also increase as we get older. And it's also important for the older adult to maintain healthy attitudes. There is a strong connection between the mind and the body. Older adults that maintain a positive outlook on life tend to follow good health practices and remain healthier longer. 
Regular interaction with other people of all age groups will help maintain a positive attitude toward life. Nurses cannot force an individual to participate beyond his or her wishes, but a little encouragement and information about options can help stimulate the older person's interests. Volunteering in hospitals, schools, literacy centers, or other community settings is a popular and desirable activity because it does help promote a sense of value and self-worth. A decrease in social interaction can contribute to deterioration of cognitive and adaptive skills. So a question, a decrease in social interaction can contribute to deterioration of cognitive and adaptive skills. This is true. Factors that affect health promotion and maintenance. Health perceptions are going to influence the day-to-day -day choices regarding hygiene practices, nutrition, exercise, use of alcohol, drugs, tobacco, accessing health care, and many other activities. Health perceptions are going to be influenced by religious and cultural beliefs, socioeconomic states, education, and life practices. Based on their unique beliefs, most people will perform activities they believe will maintain or improve their health, and they avoid those activities they feel might be harmful. It can be very difficult to change a person's lifetime health practice. Religious beliefs can promote health maintenance or interfere with good health practices, resulting in increased health risks. Individuals whose religion teaches that the body is a temple tend to live longer, healthier lives. Other persons whose religions teach that illness is a punishment for sins may feel that they're not worthy of health and must endure illness as an atonement for what they've done wrong in their lives. Cultural beliefs. Reliance on home health remedies is common in many cultures. It can be harmless, but it can also be dangerous. It does play a significant role in the selection of food and the methods used for food preparation. It can also be a factor in health promotion and maintenance. It's important for nurses to have an overview of common health practices to help nurses understand that underlying values and beliefs that are motivating people. Knowledge of recommended health practices is essential to make good choices. People cannot make informed decisions regarding their health and safety unless they know the consequences of various behaviors. People that are experiencing grief, depression, hopelessness, or low self-esteem may not be motivated to maintain good health practices. So teaching regarding health and safety should begin early in life, and it needs to be reinforced throughout life. People that have limited mo physical mobility, limited transportation, or money are also likely to experience difficulty in maintaining good health. Adaptive and assistive devices can promote mobility. Perceptions of good health and good practices vary widely, and they're formed, once again, early in life. They greatly affect motivation to participate in health maintenance. Those who perceive a decline in health as a normal process of aging, and they may do little to prevent the loss of function. They just simply accept those changes. Others, particularly those that have followed good health practices throughout their life, believe that old age is not synonymous with disease or loss of function. Significant cognitive or perceptual problems can also increase the risks for personal neglect or injury. Sensory changes will increase the risk for injuries from falls, poisoning, fire, and other traumatic events. 
older adults who are seriously impaired, either perceptually or cognitively, commonly lack awareness of their own needs, and they are at serious risk for injury because they're often unable to recognize the danger of their actions or inactions or changes in their environment. Older adults are going to be likely to experience more problems accessing goods and services than the younger generations. That access might be limited by decreased physical mobility, the lack of transportation, and limited finances. A lack of financial stability can prevent adequate health maintenance by preventing purchase of medications, obtaining health care, or purchasing healthy foods. It can also affect living locations. Life in older homes or poorer areas cannot maintain the homes or they cannot maintain their home's integrity. Some additional factors that can make health maintenance more difficult are going to be those physical limitations, including loss of motor skills, decreased strength and endurance, and the presence of disease. Another question. A patient's financial issues should not be included in the nurse's plan of care. This is false. Older adults may struggle to find help when dealing with health care needs. An inability to follow through with the therapeutic regimen will put these clients at risk. So it's necessary for nurses to determine the unique problems, beliefs, and perceptions of each older adult. We must assess current and past health management practices and answer assessment questions. Answers to those assessment questions are going to help nurses determine whether clients are at risk and help us identify client problems. So nursing goals and outcomes identification. We want the client to verbalize appropriate health maintenance practices and demonstrate adequate health maintenance practices. We also want them to identify community resources to assist in health maintenance. Nursing interventions and implementations will include assessing the ability of a client to resume adequate health maintenance practices. Teach the clients to monitor health status at home. Consulting with a social worker or other agencies to assist with health maintenance. And assess existing health maintenance practices. Explain and reinforce positive health maintenance behaviors and assist in identifying family or community resources. The nursing process for non-adherence with the treatment plan, we need to realize that non-adherence is a term that is replacing non-compliance in nursing. It's only indicated when a client fails to follow through with a recommended regimen, despite adequate teaching and resources. This can include the client not taking prescribed medications, missing medical appointments, it is incon being inconsistent with a prescribed diet, and it is also suspected when a client does not show expected progress. The nursing process would be used to determine non-adherence. Different interventions include identifying the reasons for the non-adherent behavior, providing care in a non-judgmental manner, actively including the client in planning care and adapting or modifying that care plan, emphasizing the benefits of adhering to the treatment plan, and acknowledging the aging person's right to not adhere to the treatment plan. One more question. Non-adherence should be expected when? The correct answer is D, all of the above.